Good morning everybody, this is Lara with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. I'll make it quite quick today because the last couple of days have been rather in-depth and long. Technicals for Bitcoin still finding resistance in a little zone from 71,500 to 73,100, a little bit of a pause, still finding support above 68,400. This looks like a normal pause before breaking through resistance, I expect upward movement from Bitcoin. A small range downward session yesterday has a little bit of a push from volume. We might see a bit more downward movement to follow that to test support about 68,400. Not necessarily though, sometimes downward movement will end with an increase in volume. Here, downward movement had increasing volume, upward movement had increasing volume, and again upward movement had an increasing volume. The volume profile at the moment, to be honest, at this time frame, is pretty mixed. I do expect most likely though an upward breakout above resistance, maybe next week now. ADX is declining, so the previous upward trend reached very extreme. The DX lines are whipsawing. This is what ADX looks like when there is a pullback or consolidation. There's a long way to go for the next trend to develop and reach extreme. This is a very bullish look for Bitcoin. Money flow also neutral. ATR still overall showing some little increase. So even though price is starting to move a little slowly, it looks off the low, there is actually some underlying strength. Volatility has not left this market. That's very bullish. And at the higher time frame, there is still very obviously an upward trend for Bitcoin. Price doesn't move in a straight line. There will be consolidations and pullbacks along the way, and that is a sign of a normal, healthy, bullish market. My Elliott Wave count for Ethereum for the very short term remains the same. I went over this Elliott Wave count in detail with monthly and weekly charts yesterday. To have a look at that, find yesterday's video. It's pretty easy to find. It's the last one I did. My new wave 3, subdividing as an impulse, this looks like an almost textbook perfect Elliott wave impulse. 5 way structure for 1, zigzag for 2, extended impulse for 3, zigzag for 4, there isn't perfect alternation between 2 and 4, there doesn't have to be, that's a guideline not a rule, and when you don't see alternation in structure it's usually because they're both zigzags, because that is by a really wide margin the most common Elliott Wave corrective structure. There is alternation within this though, here A and C are closer to even in length, we here A is short and C is a long extension. A and C do have a common tendency to be about even in length, but they don't have to be. That's a guideline, not a rule. Again, there are rules in Elliott Wave that are absolute and they must be met for your wave count to be valid, and there's a bunch of guidelines. The more guidelines your wave count meets, the better probability it has, but guidelines don't have to be met. And that's how you can rank probability of Elliott wave counts. So long as they meet all the rules, they're valid. Which one meets more guidelines? Well, there's your higher probability count. That's one technique to do that. And so there's not perfect alternation between two and four, but there is still some alternation within them. My target is a $4 zone for my Newt wave three, 8134, is where minute 3 would reach 6.854 the length of 1 that's an extreme Fibonacci ratio and 8130 is where the fifth wave minuet 5 would reach 2.618 the length of the third wave so the fifth wave is expected to be longer than the third wave it's expected to be quite a strong extension that's really very very typical behavior for a fifth wave to end a third wave one degree higher I have some reasonable confidence in this target if we move this impulse all down one degree it could just be a first wave within minute wave 3. Minute wave 3 may be an even longer extension. This is the easiest way to get an alternate wave count move part of your wave count up or down 1 degree. If minute wave 1 is incomplete, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 4886, 5 would reach equality in length with 3. When minute 1 is complete, a second wave correction may not move beyond its start below 2092.33. For the short term, Ethereum is finding some support and resistance about 3580. It had closed above that point. It turned to support, but yesterday it's closed below that point. So again, it's resistance. It looks like we're having a very small consolidation around this area, this little cluster. If price can move comfortably above resistance, closing above that point comfortably on an upward session with an push from volume, then look for next resistance at 4200. The larger trend for Ethereum does remain up, but price doesn't move in a straight line. There will be pullbacks and consolidations along the way. 
and that's a normal healthy behavior for a bull market. A little bit of a push from volume as price moves lower yesterday but overall volume continues to decline. Declining volume is normal during a consolidation. ADX continues to decline. The previous upward trend reached very extreme so it's very good to see a pullback and consolidation to relieve the extreme conditions and bring ADX further deeply into neutral territory before we see the next trend develop at this time frame. At the weekly and monthly time frame, the trend for Ethereum remains up. RSI is neutral previous, the upward last bullish run reached very extreme, no bearish divergence though, but a pullback and consolidation has brought things back into neutral, giving plenty of room for the larger upward trend now to resume. Likewise, money flow is neutral, there is plenty of room for the larger upward trend to resume. And overall, ATR continues to show an increase a little bit steady for the last little while, that's actually pretty impressive during a consolidation. Volatility is what I'm measuring with ATR, and it has not left the market that is very bullish for Ethereum. I have two short term Elliott Wave accounts for XRP. I covered XRP's Elliott Wave analysis in depth two days ago so if you want to see that click through to my last video two days ago and you'll find it. Monthly, weekly, daily charts and an alternate at the monthly time frame. For the very short term I expect a leading expanding diagonal may have completed for a first wave I'm labeling it minute degree followed most likely by a completed pullback for a second wave subdividing as a zigzag. This wave count for XRP he expects a third wave at minute, minor, intermediate, primary and cycle degrees and it's very very early stages this is an extremely bullish wave count for XRP. It's possible that this pullback may not be complete, here's my alternate, it could be continuing lower as a zigzag with an impulse for A, running contracting triangle nearly complete for B and then C to move lower. The lower BD trend line has a reasonable slope, the upper AC trend line has some slope. I would now expect for this wave count, if this is correct, for E to complete a little zigzag up to fall short of the AC trend line. E waves of Elliott wave triangles most often fall a little bit short of the AC trend line. Less commonly they may slightly overshoot the AC trend line, but the rule for where wave E may not go is it may not move above the end of C of 0.6622. A new high above that point would see me invalidate this wave count. I'd probably discard it. I probably wouldn't try and look at a different structure for minuet. B, especially if upward movement was occurring with push from volume. I'd just go with the main Elliott wave count. But for now this is also possible and I like to consider alternates since the best way to do Elliott wave analysis. So don't always have a good alternate, usually it's just something I can see that I'm not charting for you but here I've decided to chart it to show you how it works. If we see a zigzag completing a triangle for B we'd then need a five wave structure down for C to move beyond the end of A which has its low at 0.5868 to avoid a truncation. Now note it doesn't need to move below the price extreme of B which has its low at 0.5688 in order to avoid a truncation. The truncation applies to where C ends in relation to A. It's an important little detail perhaps to learn about Elliott Wave. For this wave count the invalidation point means 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 0.4883. Very quickly technicals for XRP. I had my lower edge of my pennant drawn like this but it's got such a steep slope. I think I'd rather draw it like this now. Still got a question mark about is this a pennant pattern unfolding? So far it's lasted 10 sessions. The best performing flags and pennants complete within 15 sessions so there's only another 5 sessions to go for this one before it starts to reduce in probability. For this one we need to see a break above resistance on an upward session closing above this resistance line with push from volume or a break below support closing below the support line preferably with push from volume but that's not so necessary for a downward breakout because price can fall of its own weight. With the readjusted support line for the pennant I calculate the breakout point at 0 0.6073 giving us a target from the pennant at 0.3988. Pennants and flags are reliable continuation patterns but you do have to be pretty flexible with adjusting your trend lines and are they actually is this actually a pen into a flag and being open to well it didn't turn out to be but particularly adjusting your trend lines as they unfold so that's what I'm doing today if we see a downward breakout this would be the target from the pennant but I think that's probably way too low. I think it's much more likely price will find pretty good support in the 54.55 cent area if it got back down that low to for a final test before moving up and away. What I think is actually more likely is the pennant's going to fail and XRP is just going to move on up as per, as per my main Elliott wave count. I think that has the highest probability. And it's been unable this week to overcome resistance of 0 0.675 
1.5, but if it can close above that point, look for a quick back test of support before moving up and away and look for next resistance at 82 cents. Yesterday, volume slightly increased as price fell, a little bit of a push from volume. We've seen that before, and yet price can just continue on sideways. Overall, Volume is declining as price moves sideways. This is normal behaviour for a consolidation. Price is range bound. It's consolidating. We need to wait for a breakout to have confidence in the next direction of the trend. I expect the breakout is most likely to be upward. ADX is ever so slightly declining today, no longer giving us that very strong bullish signal it gave yesterday, but it is not going to take much for the black ADX line again to have a positive slope. If that happens, then XRP would be expected to be in the very early stages of a new upward trend that is an extremely bullish signal from ADX. RSI is neutral, there is a long way to go before a new trend would reach extreme. Money flow is neutral, actually below 50, such a long way to go before a new trend could reach very extreme. ATR showing a bit of a decline for XRP though as price moves sideways, a little bit of weakness in that sideways movement, that's not a deal breaker for a bullish case, but there is more weakness in XRP than the other two, that just seems to be a pattern that just keeps continuing sadly. Now I know that my analysis is really technical, I've been doing this for 16 years, it's I'm trying to make it approachable and understandable for those of you who are new to technical analysis and I'm doing that by trying to make it really clear what direction I expect. All of these I expect up. Bullish goes up, bearish goes down, there's a lot of jargon in what I'm using and it's really really technical you can learn a lot from what I'm doing or you can just take it at a really superficial level and just listen to what direction I expect price to go and you don't have to listen to my technical reasoning for it I'm trying to make this as approachable as I can for as many people as I can but just remember this is something I've do, done every day for 16 years it's really difficult for me to not speak with this jargon and this level of technical detail but I am trying. I hope that this is approachable for as many of you as possible. That's it for me today. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you for your support. And if you're not subscribed already, do so so that you don't lose my channel. I'm giving you these th three markets for free Monday to Friday with 16 years experience, 11 of which is a chartered market technician. So I am a professionally trained and qualified person to be doing this for you. So you can have confidence that I should know what I'm doing. Thank you so much.